Tonight's live stream is brought to you by Cybrary. If you're looking for IT training more specifically geared towards cybersecurity, make sure you guys check out cybrary.it. Use the coupon code ITCQ50. Save 50% off your premium membership. Check out the link in the description below for more information. Yo, what's going on YouTube? Zach with IT Career Questions. I'm here with Josh Davis. He is a good friend of mine. We've been, we've been good friends for a while now, huh, Josh Davis? How you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. How you doing? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you. Hear you great, man. How's it going? Ah, it's another Thursday, getting ready to turn into a Friday. Quite happy, man. Quite happy. Awesome, awesome. So today uh, we're talking about uh, cybersecurity jobs. We're talking about uh, well, I, I put on here cybersecurity warfare with yeah. uh, with Josh Davis. Cybersecurity right. warfare. I, I I like the thumbnail that I put on there. By the way, I thought that was really. Uh, <laughs> Really catchy, huh? That's fun. And it, it brought me here today, Zach. I know, man. That's good. All right. So, so, so what you want to jump in and talk about first? Let me talk a little bit about like my vision of getting a job in cyber. A little bit of my history. Yeah. Let's. Uh, you take it yeah. over, man. You run this All show. Right. I'll take over the chat, and you. Uh, you cool. Run this All show. right. So uh, please, everyone, ask questions. And part of what I want to give you guys is my background, kind of my story, how I got into computing, uh, IT. And then how I actually ended up in cyber. So real fast, I did go partially the conventional route. I went to a smaller school in Georgia, uh, got an undergrad in computer science. Hated school. I hated school, um, high school, all of it with a passion. Felt it was quite boring. Um, and I would say because I wasn't challenged. And I wasn't interested in most of the material, except for maybe physics. That was probably my best class. Grades were always A's and B's. Didn't really study a whole lot. Really kind of hate studying. So, all right. I'll go get a college degree. Georgia, thankfully, had this thing called HOPE. They still have it that actually helps you get a degree, uh, does a lot of the funding for you. Uh, you still have to pay for books. So not too bad. Uh, started CS degree. The key thing, though, that really changed everything for me uh, was not school. It was getting a co-op job. So cooperative education where I started working part-time doing IT. Uh, and I would say I was doing part-time, so every other semester. I'd work full time and then I'd probably part time during uh, the school. During that right there uh, exposed me to IT and I didn't realize how much I love the problem solving. And that's something that Zach talks about all the time. That's what really IT is. IT and computing is absolutely problem solving. So I love puzzles. And I did not realize I actually like people. So IT kind of taught me that. I transitioned there into a full time job where I was actually uh, being a co op and you know, doing the IT job. It took me about three and a half years following when I started that. Graduated my degree, got a full time job. Um, so that was a lot of it. Um, that's kind of how I really got into the field. But I can tell you guys right now, as soon as I started working in the field, I started making A's. I started like loving my computer science classes because it actually felt meaningful and I was actually accomplishing something. Uh, unlike what I felt like in school was just, you know, trying to get a grade. So that's how I got into it. Um, and I guess, Zach, before I kind of move on, you any questions or comments or maybe some folks uh, here on the stream? I don't have anything. I, I think right now, I mean, I, I love hearing your story. I think I've heard part of your story before, but um, mm -hmm. It's always good to get everybody's kind of, I think hearing everybody's different perspective on exactly, started, you know, um, yeah. How much do you th feel like the, your CS degree played part in what you did? Um, I, I would say a lot, but I would say that without the degree, one, the degree gave me the confidence that I can actually be a coder. So I'll get a little more detail. So I actually was working in a university. Um, I was very insecure about going to a university to work. Everyone there was so smart. And I was at a smaller school, a local school that I felt not as maybe as smart. So the insecurity was quite strong. But what was fascinating is I realized uh, uh, intellect, smartness is not necessarily about GPA or about passing the SAT, you know, making a really high grade on the SAT. So I started solving problems uh, around IT and helping folks solve problems that the smart folks couldn't solve. And that right there was really encouraging. And I would say if I didn't work and just went straight through school, um, I'd probably be in a job I'm not happy with right now. Uh, the, the, the working and going through school, it really validated for me that the field of computing is what I wanted to get into. I mean, one of the first things I did, Zach, um, as soon as I learned about Linux, someone challenged me at Georgia Tech, said, 
you know what you should probably do to learn a little more about software is install Linux. So I rolled up and I think it was the, yeah, late nineties, installed a Red Hat 4.0 on my laptop. I'm hundred percent only open source software, felt like a super nerd. Um, quite refreshing. Linux definitely taught me a lot. I would say forcing myself to experience what it's like to not be in Windows was quite uh, refreshing. So I think that really kind of got me excited. It wasn't school per se. School gave me new perspectives, but the challenges and the puzzles came from life and working. So kind of fast forwarding a little bit, kind of getting into security. My job transitioned to where I was doing a lot of software with uh, various government organizations, a lot of testing, a lot of Python, a lot of VB, uh, a lot of everything you can think of, uh, day in, day out for a few years. I eventually got to a point where I was managing software developers and then eventually doing the strange thing of going into business development and sales. Now that was all at the same time around doing my software, doing my cybersecurity. So this transition now to tell you that right now, I'm a sales guy ish at a cyber gaming company. I would have never told you that when I was in college. Um, so all you guys out there that are interested in getting in jobs, you're always selling. And eventually you too might want to be a salesperson. So yeah, well, there's a lot more to my story. So I could talk about me all day, but I'd love to learn more about uh, what are people looking to do? And what are the challenges they see getting into IT? Are you uh are you are you tapping on your desk or something? Probably. Is it is it loud? Yeah, I don't know. I just keep hearing like this this like muffled sound. You know what? I, I'm a little hyper. Something else, folks, folks here. If you have ADD Ooh. and you like caffeine, software, IT is the way to go. That's true. That's true. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. I just can't. No, no, it's good, man. I make noise. noises. Like, what is that noise? It's cool. I figured it out. I'm like trying it's to adjust good. like the sounds and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so what else are you thinking here? I mean, everyone here is looking to find a job, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you're running the show, man. You're, you're this is all okay. you, bro. So, I'm, okay, I'm running the show. Well, this is I'm very uncomfortable running the show. Okay. So, I will say those out there that are listening, uh, I love to see some questions. And I guess Zach, you're watching the questions right now, right? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to keep a little bit of eye on it, but I really, uh, I definitely want you to uh, continue with kind of what the path that okay. you kind of went with. All right, all right, all I'll do that. I just, I, I, I feel guilty a bit. Not really. All right, I'll get over that. So, so I guess, folks, I, my whole view shifted so quickly, and I would say because of Linux and open source software, I would say that I started to love computing and love the freedom that I experienced in installing my own operating system and managing that distribution and updating and doing things. And everyone's like, what is that? I'm like, it's Linux. And back then everyone called it Linux and all that debate. But I loved that experience. And then coding, <clears throat> learning the right software and scripting and just everything. I just, I would say that I have a love for computing that's never gonna die. Um, the fact that I've transitioned into more management and leadership roles and then eventually in sales roles, I still haven't lost the passion. So I can tell you too, as you mature in your career, you're gonna find out there's new problems to solve, new challenges that interest you. And I can tell you guys right now, I'm, I'm more interested in the human component using technology than just the technology. Uh, the technology itself is absolutely fun and absolutely challenging, but uh, making it accessible and useful by people, that's the hard one. And that's something exactly as you knew, like at a hospital, trying to solve those problems that are happening every day uh, I mean, IT dude, it was like a, it was like a drug for me being the savior every day, walking into a room and I don't know, maybe just touching the keyboard. Pretty, pretty freaking amazing. Um, so yeah, if you guys love, uh, problems, love moving fast. Yeah. This, this is the domain to be in. And what's even cooler is this computing domain is touching every aspect of society. So nowadays you pretty much can't find a career where you don't have something to do with computing. And, that, and that's the beauty of it too. Because as I get bored in one domain, one, one thrust, I can move to another. So like for me, uh, I did, it was in a sense called applied research, did a lot of government software and stuff for uh, a university. Uh, that was 20 years. That job transitioned uh, probably every month to something new. So I was always getting a new challenge, but eventually the problem solving became kind of repetitive in the same kind of domains, the same kind of challenges that then I found an opportunity with this, uh, this cyber company, cyber gaming company, and 
I, I stepped out. That was really hard. Um, I never thought I would be someone that stayed at a job for 20 years. And then I also never thought I'd be the guy that left that job. Um, but I'm extremely excited that I did. I mean, I met Zach yep. because of that. Yeah. Um, you, you never know where life's going to take you. And that's something too, these passions as they grow in me, there's many more things that I want to learn to do. Um, kind of like this right here with Zach. Zach's, Zach's career path. I mean, IT brought him to YouTube. That's pretty cool. And I'm certain you didn't plan that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I ever thought it would be, I, never, I don't think in a million years thought I'd be on YouTube. No. <laughs> well, and it's beautiful because like, I, I love your endearing smile and the happiness. And my assumption <laughs> is that's the same thing that was made you successful in IT. Yeah. 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 So, so do you remember that moment when you found out that YouTube and IT can mix? Do you like, do you, do you remember it? I, I remember the mo like the, when I first did like a video where I was talking just about like getting into IT, like it was, yeah. it was titled like things that you should know about getting into IT. Right. And it was just like a stupid video. I did it while I was driving in my car. You know, <laughs> which is and, totally not legal, right? Yeah, right? And uh, I said the word "like" uh, probably at least a hundred times in that video because I had no idea what the hell I was doing. Exactly. Um, but the feedback that I got from that video was just—it blew me away, and I, it, it, it just—I don't know—it, it, it threw me for a loop, right? And that—that that was the moment where I was like, oh my gosh like yeah. i love helping people like i that's the thing about it is that i really love helping people that's right. that's the most enjoyable part of working in it for me was being able to help people whether you know helping an end user or just you know helping the overall health system environment uh, with you know the computer systems and networks and all exactly. that right yeah i just enjoy that so when i found out oh my gosh i can help people on the internet mm -hmm that with like i was <laughs> like all right cool. like i can think i could do this i want to try this well, what's crazy is i would say that that aha moment that passion i'm sure there was fear with it there was this doubt that uh well what do i know i'm talking about what, what, how am i an expert that's something i've learned very quickly um if you want to become an expert just do just yeah. get a book look on the web just do and if you have a passion for it let that drive you through the fear um, like certs, these certs that a lot of folks are studying for, if you see that's a, a step to get where you want to be, use that dream and passion. Uh, that's something, something for me that I'm always accused of being very passionate and it's contagious because I've, I've realized life is freaking awesome, but it is up to you. Yeah. Um, and technology, man, I mean, can you imagine, was it 20 years ago, give or take, we wouldn't be doing this right here. It would be impossible. Yeah, no, I think, uh. It's let's see what is it 2019 so 20 years ago is when we first got our uh, a, a computer that connected to the internet so um, if you would have told me 21 years ago that this was a possibility right like any I would have told you like I just never would have thought anything of it you know what I mean and what I love too is I've seen you now probably I don't know I don't know we'll say 20 times not in person. Right. on youtube and i watch your freaking videos all the time so i see your face <laughs> quite frequently meeting you in person for the i want to met you in person one time yeah which is a crazy we built this friendship so anyway yeah. technology and that's yeah uh technology brings problems to solve and that's really what works about is solving problems and it's, the problems are never going to end yeah so let's <laughs> um let's let, let's shift a little bit I, I, not that i want to get away from that, that no, conversation because no, no. it's great fun. great combo this is something that we talk about often, which is yeah. cybersecurity jobs, right? And we actually, and, and if people are unaware, I should actually put like a link to this in, in the description. We, we started like a little uh, a YouTube channel that we're trying to work on. Um, we'll talk more about that at probably maybe another time, but cyber soda, right? But anyway, um, you know, there's 300,000 open cybersecurity jobs um, in, the US. in the US. And that's a huge concern, right? Like that's, that that concerns me that concerns you absolutely why does that concern you josh okay well number one uh it concerns me because it's never going to get better fast enough uh at least in the u.s uh I mean, globally the numbers are looking around like 3.5 million around 2022 the lack of talent filling the gaps these jobs so so what do you do well you train people that's absolutely one thing so a lot of you folks now that are studying to get in security, we need you. 
Um, one thing that also scares me is I think society has a view on security that number one is absolutely hard. So you got to be a hacker to get in. Not true. Um, two, uh, that yeah, maybe maybe technology is not for me. So I think you're going to start finding a lot of folks transitioning from seemingly not related uh, career paths into security. And I think security is going to keep evolving. But no, it it scares me, but it also excites me because it it, it tells me there's a need that we all have, uh, and and we bound together to do it. And that's sort of what we're going after. So yeah, the training in cyber is good. The thing that blows my mind is because there's going to be a gap in so many people, we're going to be leaning upon software more. And that software is going to be AI machine learning. So I theorize, and many do this, uh, you're going to be seeing your own Alexis and your socks helping you along the way. It's going to be happening. But what's cool is all these folks out here looking for jobs are going to jump in and help. Uh, so yeah, the opportunities I would say are almost endless. You find a job in software, I believe you have a job for, for pretty much ever. Security, uh, you're going to always be, uh, yeah, no problem. Career, absolute career path all the way. And fun, dynamic, and ever-changing. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and one of the things I, I want to, before I forget, because I'm like trying to do like 18 things at once right now. No, no, that's what we do in this world. Oh, now, <laughs> right, it's ADD and <laughs> freaking everything else. Um, we had said that there's what? Um, how, how many people in the United States? There's uh, what? Oh, there's 350 million. 350 roughly. million people in the United States. And then in Asia, there's what? Like 1 billion people on the internet or something? Uh, no, no, no. There's 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 uh, 2.3 or 2.5 billion. And that's only, no, no. <laughs> no, it's all, no, it's, yeah, no, it's, that, yeah, it's something in the billions, but it's absolutely astronomical it's uh inconceivable given that we're uh we're only 350 million we're a very small country yeah that's crazy that's so crazy to think about we're we're on an island we're on an island which was kind of inaccessible and now the internet's created this wonderful pathway um so yeah coming to your 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 title um cyber war yeah so all of you folks listening cyber war is going on right now every day Warfare has changed. It's not out in the fields away from us. It's ever present right now on all the technology we're touching. And so changing our culture, changing how we train, how we fight, how we protect. I mean, it's it's going to be there forever. And it's, it's economic war is really what it is. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, but that's just like, I mean, it's so mind, mind boggling to think about, honestly, when you think that, okay, we're 350 million people in just the United States, and I think of the majority of the viewers that we have on right now are probably from the United States. We're 350 million people. That's a huge, huge number. But then you think about... It's tiny. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tiny in the, like grand ske- in the grand scheme of things. Yes, it's That's tiny. Right. But, you know, when you think of asia having two and a half billion people on the internet alone and, and, and asia only, has well, four billion only, people or whatever dude only 30 percent ish and i and, and, and later on we can reference uh, where the stats come from but only 30 percent penetration in the internet us is about 90 something percent yeah so there's not a lot to go there but the rest of the globe is going to catch up yeah it's so it it, it just kind of when you kind of put that into per, to a perspective right uh, this is kind of how I'm envisioning it, right? Like, here's a reason why there's 300,000 jobs that are open in cybersecurity because the internet is vast. It's huge, right? There's a lot of things that need protecting. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of vulnerabilities out there. That's there right. There's a lot of opportunity. Now, with the opportunity, I'm not saying that opportunity can necessarily be good because there's a lot of opportunity for bad too. So, right. And I think it's part of the problem too is the ability to scale bad is cheaper yeah. uh, with the internet. Unlike you know uh, you and I robbing a neighborhood, it requires physical. You uh, as a as a cyber hacker, I can scale through software. Now, right. Well, means- think about think about how cheap it is if I were to go on uh, like Tor, you know, whatever, and I wanted to purchase uh, some malware, right, well, and and purchase a botnet, even right. Well, I would say it, even purchase a, a ransomware already owned somebody's business in in the United States. You yeah, that even that. Likely. Yeah, I mean, you could spend. And I was reading an article the other day where a lot of the stuff you're looking at between like 
2500 5000 sometimes $10,000. Yeah. That's really not a lot of money when then you then compare it with a lot of the uh, other businesses and organizations that are providing software that are trying to protect well, <laughs> your business I, from then, this. Then, then take, then <laughs> you take know? it to where, like someone in Africa who that money could be enough money for multiple years. Right. There's incentive. And that's something else too that this domain of cyber creates is lack of attribution. I can commit a crime remotely with a low probability of being found or captured and then suffering consequences. So if your family's suffering and you could help their life, uh, this would create incentives to do it. And people are manipulating others for that. So yeah, yeah. Uh, the problem's not gonna go away, uh, <laughs> but we definitely need to fight it. And I, I think it'll be an example of us coming together. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it sounds all cheesy and fun, but it, I'm telling you guys, everyone needs to jump in and help. There are so many opportunities. Uh, so let's talk about that. Seth. Let's talk about the different types of jobs you can do in security. Obviously, IT, you can kind of manage internal infrastructure. That's obviously the kind of the main one. There's always a security mind there. Uh, also running a security operations center and participating there as a security analyst, helping, helping the organization protect itself when an attack actually happens. Because that's something else you're always going to get compromised. The question is, what do you do about it? So you have numbers of folks coming along the way, helping there. There's also some other the fun ones, which I would call your 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 hackers per se, folks that are hired. And I'm sure you've talked about pen testing, of course. Yeah, I believe you did. Mm -hmm. But yeah, pen testing jobs. That's your basically it's your wannabe criminals that are doing it for the good, but getting paid well to do it. So it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, <coughs> it just just it keeps on going. There's software, software is everywhere. Software needs to be written securely. I noticed real quick over here someone mentioned OWASP. OWASP is a wonderful community that talks about secure web development, because a lot of the problems we have right now is a lot of the web computing is just opening these wide doors uh, for people to get in. So one way we do fix that is teaching people the cultural changes, the, the norms that need to become standards for how we don't write, write poor software. Um, yeah, and you and I could probably talk for days for a little more research of getting specific. There's this um, standard in cyber called the, the NICE NIST framework. Uh, so NIST yep. is a standard in the US. NICE is a breakdown of, in a sense, work roles. Uh, I don't know the quantity, but it breaks down uh, pretty pretty detailed all the different aspects of defending an organization through cyber. And there's dozens of different types of jobs within that domain, and it's only gonna keep growing. Um, something else too that's happening, we're seeing folks outsource their security. It's becoming very common for something called a managed uh, software or a managed security service provider. So in a sense, hiring someone to set up a sock for you. You're gonna keep seeing more and more than those grow. I just, yeah, it's Zach, it's just, and then if we talk about IOT, I mean, you and I have those conversations, billions yeah. of devices online. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, so yeah, this is the right, this is the right field to get into. And I think IT, computing, software, cyber, yeah, it's all the same. They all touch each other. Yeah, they touch each other in great ways sometimes. Nice ways. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Good, Absolutely. Good. Well, so do you want to keep chatting? You want to look at some some comments here? I thought some interesting questions earlier. Yeah. Was, um, I mean, I, I, I've seen a, a few questions about people asking about, you know, is, is AI going to take everybody's jobs, basically, is what it boils down to. Um, I guess I want to see what your take on that is, because I, I mean, I've answered those types of questions like numerous times, but... Uh, sure. You know, somebody just said, uh, Patrick here said, did uh, did you say AI will take cyber jobs? And then somebody said, uh, people in software will always have a job, not worried about AI. Oh, that was Patrick too. Well, yeah. so I would say both, right? I, my, my, my first opinion is AI is going to change how we do work. So right now, look at how the internet's changed our jobs, what our kids do for fun. So I, AI is going to change that too. Now, if any of you here get really into kind of science fiction and futurist thinking, there's a gentleman by the name of Ray Kurzweil. Uh, he's a researcher and a futurist that talks about the day when uh, AI and software will kind of take over our evolution of technology because we won't be able to keep up. Um, I, th I think he's right. I don't think it'll be as science fiction-y as we imagine it. I think it'll be subtle and quiet. I think it's kind of happening now. Um, YouTube using a little bit of AI machine learning to recommend videos to watch that Zach puts out for me. 
that's a little bit of jumping in. This recommending concept is absolutely AI and machine learning. So learning what I want to track me. So down the road, yeah, we'll, we'll keep seeing more of that. I, I think eventually you'll start seeing recommending systems where, hey, it's your wife's birthday next week and she's been looking at this thing to buy. Do you want to get it for her? And I will absolutely say yes. And I'll absolutely be thankful that the software reminded me. So no, it's just going to change our jobs is what I believe, not replace us. Yeah, this is funny you bring up the wife and, and <laughs> AI because uh, uh, just bringing this the story into it because uh, yesterday or the day before my wife was, uh, she was logging into the, her bank or something on her phone yeah. and it told her that it was going to send her a text message with the code, like the, you know, the uh, 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 verification code, you know, like right. a two-factor two authentication type of verification yeah. code um, that she needed to input into the banking app. Well, you know, since AI is so intelligent, you know, she still had the banking app open. She received the text message. Okay. And the banking app then said, you know, you received this text message. This do is you the code. Yeah. Do you want to, yeah. Do you want us to input it for you basically? Yeah, of said, course. She you know? said, yes. Isn't that yeah. crazy? She's like, I, I, I love how smartphone, like, I love how smart my phone is, you know? Well, like, and it's crazy because, yeah. like, like, think about AI, that. Bro. From the hacker side, can I, can I use that against you? Absolutely, right. right? Oh, God, yeah. So, hey, there's a, there's someone here that actually, uh, which apparently is a football lover. Uh, so, yeah, I got a question here. I am, I'm 17, got a job offer for an assistance admin job focused on security. Would you recommend taking the offer or would you recommend go to university and study CS? Um, honestly, I would tell you to do both. And the reason I would say do both, at least for me, school was not interesting enough or motivational enough. Like getting an A didn't make, I mean, it made me happy, but it didn't give me purpose. Having a job that I was working on even though it might take longer to go through school. And I know when you're 17 or 18, it seems like school's forever. It's not, it's a very short period of time in your life. Like Zach and I, like I, I'm not gonna announce Zach's age, but I'm absolutely only 26 years old. No, but I'm 42 and I've totally gave away some PII, which is okay. Uh, Cause you can find it easily anyway. But in my forties now, holy crap, college was like, it was a, it was like a blur. So when I look back, I took another year working part-time and then working full-time part-time so on and so forth as I was in school it was perfect for me so I would I would say for you guys it's like that particular question there uh, FIFA lover um absolutely I would say do both if you can all right uh, what else is going on here I need to give a shout out to uh uh to James Shackleford thank you very much sir and it's good to see you by the way thank, thank you for the Yay. super chat uh thank you IT career skills very much sir I appreciate that it's good to see you it's been a while since we've chatted Dude, this and, is neat. Uh, thank you, Joseph Flores. I do greatly appreciate that for the super chats. You Absolutely. Awesome. Oh, okay. So here's something here. I want to chime in. So again, I'm going to talk about insecurity. Um, I don't know. I was always insecure about my grades. I suck at test taking. Like I passed a CISSP. Uh, I didn't, I'm not paying for it anymore and doing it, but I did pass it. I studied for many months with flashcards and was so nervous to go take that test. Um, but I passed, thank goodness. Um, but back in the day, my SAT score was terrible. Um, I always just choke up. So testing always made me feel not smart. So then when I started working at the university uh, as an IT guy, talking to my boss, I'll never forget it. He said a degree, all a degree really is, is it's telling another person that you know how to learn. That's really it. So does it matter where you get it? Uh, where you get it can dictate opportunities, but at the end of the day, if you got a degree, it tells you, you know how to learn. And really what matters is, can you do the job? And that's something I think IT is very good at forcing you to do is figuring things out. I mean, I think almost everyone should get a job in IT for a year or two for two reasons. One, to learn technology and two, people. Because people in technology is some messy, messy business. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Um, cool. hey, uh, James Shackelford here. Uh, thank you again for, for another super chat. Uh, have you ever heard of FireEye Cyber Threat Map website? I, I have. Um, it's quite attractive. It's kind of fun to see how evil the world's going on. FireEye is really good at getting a lot of intelligence to kind of kind of help there. Um, so yeah, absolutely. 
If you if you folks haven't, and you're not really understanding some of the magnitude that that Zach and I talked about earlier, check check that out. Uh, the FireEye uh, yeah FireEye Cyber uh, Threat Map because it's it's pretty amazing to see what's happening right now. Um, but this form of war is not as explosive. It's definitely almost like you know death by a million paper cuts. That and so it'll be subtle. Um, yeah, the there, the war isn't. I, I don't think there's a war for uh, oil anymore, and there's not a war for <laughs> not like uh, that for, exactly for money anymore. I think the war for right now is there's a war for data. There's oh, there's just like that's the new Ooh. war. Okay, so data. that right there, so data, data is equivalent to currency now, right? Yes. It's like it's money. Yes, it is. Very All right, so, so FIFA lover, yes, I, I would say study half time. I would say anyone here. I mean, find out what works for you. Everybody's different, but I know for me, full time school led me to boredom. I mean, I don't know about you, Zach. I mean, maybe you love school. <laughs> We're not saying school's bad. It's just one aspect, but in truth, finding your passion and scratching that itch. I, I didn't go to college, bro. I know, and I'm proud of you for it, man. Yeah. Now, high school. What, what about high school? You liked high school? Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Zach and I are not against universities or education or high school. I, I think it, they're yeah. all good, but it, they I'm... serve. They they don't solve the problem. They're just a tool yep. in the tool bed, just like certs are. Certs are tools. Uh, YouTube videos on how to write Python. That's a tool. I mean, it's just there. Yeah. Figure out what you want to do and go do it. Yeah. I, I completely agree with that. Um, cool. Larry Shervington Jr. What's going on, boss? Uh, do you believe search should create the bridge into entry level employment or is it better served to hire an individual and give them suggest a, sorry, or is it better to, uh, is it better served to hire an individual and give them a suggested pathway to follow that will complement the job. All right, so I have strong opinions there. All right, go. I think the mentoring, the the master apprentice relationship in our society in the U.S. is sorely lacking. Um, I think a cert, I think an education, like you know, an actual degree, just says I know how to pass a test to validate that I memorized this information for that period of time. Like I used to be able to look at a spelling list and then go take the test ten minutes later and ace it. Uh, right now, I am the worst speller. I use Backspace more than anybody else on the planet. And honestly, when I'm typing, I get too bored. So I just let software correct or I just let it be misspelled. Um, so yeah, just because you can pass the test doesn't mean you're smart or you're functional. So I would say to me, my, my opinion would be, yeah, bring someone in that has spirit, uh, passion, and mentor them. That's funny. What about you, man? What do, do you, you think? Do you get a, a lot of advertisements for Grammarly? Because I, I find that when I'm like watching videos and stuff, I get Grammarly ads all the time. I'm like, are you guys trying to tell me I'm terrible at spelling? Because I think I do a pretty good job. So I bought it. I bought it for a little bit, and then I got bored. Because I just, you know, if I write a word as misspelled, and you can look at it and figure out what I'm saying, that the point got across. Exactly. That's how I feel too. Except with compilers, just so all you know, like compilers are a lot more uh, picky. Uh, than we humans. We're, we're a lot more capable of figuring stuff out. That's yeah. another reason why I don't think re really AI is there yet. Yeah. yeah, It's got a little bit of work to go still yeah, before the before AI and robots take uh, take over the world. Absolutely. All right, what else we got on here? I don't know, man. The chat's going to... There's lots of stuff going on. It's just... Uh, it's hard to... So this what, okay, one. Okay, well, I security labs. I'm studying for my CICSP right now. I got through the book and I'm not impressed by the depth of information in it. It feels so shallow. Did you feel the same way uh, when you took the CISP? Okay, so yeah, let me show you guys something. I got this is an older one. I actually use it as a uh, a stand for my laptop. So, <laughs> all right, oh, I love it. So this is the version I studied with. Oh my lord! What's crazy is the red version, which is I don't think it's the newest, but it was the one following this. Yeah, I have it over there because I was going to try to redo it. It's thicker. Um, so I would say that what this gave me was um, that I didn't get from most of my software uh, perspective was business continuity and those philosophies of how business sustains itself. And if you really get into uh, security and risk, it's about what are your real assets that you're trying to protect and what are the real threats? And then from there, of course, what are your vulnerabilities? And that's an equation. It's uh, and I always mess it up. It's 
your risk equals asset plus threat plus vulnerability. So you don't need to be defending everything that every potential threat could attack because you don't have all that software in your network. So why would you waste your time? So that kind of gave me some of those philosophies, but I would have to agree. Um, but I, I do think it was good uh, of a very general broad overview, but can I go be a functional security practitioner? No, I would say it requires time, energy and experience. Um, yeah, just like everything else. It's like being a welder. You don't get really good by reading a book. You gotta go do it. Yep. Always. Always. It's pretty cool. It's cool to say how excited folks are. There's a lot of busy folks out there. This is, Zach, I got to say, man, I'm proud of you, man. You, um, you're helping a lot of folks, man. And I, I'm, I'm honored to be on here with you. And I, I'd love to continue these types of conversations because uh, this is this is cool. And Bro, I'm honored to have you on here. Oh, man. We'll, get, we'll do a man hug later off camera, okay? Uh, sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, if, if anybody has any other questions, you guys are more than welcome to uh, throw it in the chat. It looks like people are just like chatting back and forth with each other, which is great. You guys yes. are more than welcome to do that, of course. Love it. I do like this too. I agree that this uh, way the industry is moving, uh, yet they keep the requirements for entry level work. Okay, entry level. Let's talk about that because I think it's probably most folks starting in career. Uh, yeah, starting out. Um, for me and a lot of folks that I, I so I helped a lot of folks because I was around the university and did a lot of mentoring for uh, students. It was really, if you're in school or you're interested, get an entry level job. Like you've said this numerous times, get a help desk job, get something in that field so you can feel it and see if it's something you want to do. Because if it's not, go try something else. Um, right. But I would say, yeah, the entry though, at least with college, I, I would say co-op programs, internships, getting a feel for it and kind of figuring out what's your acumen for work. What do you like to do? Because I mean, coding, uh, I loved coding. I realized that my skills with uh, interacting with the humans was actually better than uh, writing the code. I mean, I can write decent code, but um, sitting in, sitting by your, I mean, you're by yourself communicating over chat, you know, hours, if not only like eight, 10, 15 until you're done. It's addictive. I, that's one thing I did love about it, man. Zach, at like four in the morning, compiling some code and seeing it run and feel like I am God in that moment. And then the next day I run it again and it breaks, but uh, it yeah. was a very, uh, very emotional, exciting experience, but also very frustrating, just like IT. Yeah. Uh, Travis put in here, I feel like uh, too many jobs require crazy years of experience, like seven, eight plus years. I mean, how's a guy supposed to start out? So, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of jobs, you know, when you see those requirements in their job descriptions, Job descriptions are wish lists. They they hope and wish and pray that their potential candidates will meet every single requirement that they're putting on that job description. But most of the time, they're never going to find anybody. I would say probably 99.9% .9 of the time, they're never going to find anybody who meets every single, um, you know, every single detail on that on that job description. So you you need to apply anyway. Exactly. That's funny because Laura Lee and I were talking last night. Uh, some of you folks might remember her huge background in security. Uh, one of the one of the pioneering females in security. And she pointed out there's some research, and I asked her to validate it because I, you know, stereotypes can kind of kind of be taken the wrong way. But she said there's research that showed that women a lot of the times would look at a job requirement and had to fulfill it 100, percent whereas men. Um, not as much, was much more capable to go ahead and apply even if they didn't fill all the requirements. And then a sales guy told me he'd look at the list and if he fulfilled 10%, he'd apply for it. So mm -hmm. so I would say you're absolutely right. Uh, yeah. Because that's something else too. In a lot of cases, the person writing up the job description is stressed, they're busy, they're having HR asking them for it. They probably copy and pay for them something else to make it quick. And then a person that's actually looking to hire, um, kind of screening out isn't, isn't knowledgeable necessarily of the of the need and especially in these big companies they're using word searches and pattern searches for your resume to say do you connect right. um so yeah i think as zach said you see a job that you like apply for it absolutely what's the worst thing that can happen right you, you hear a no you're gonna hear no a thousand million trillion times in your life you know yeah get Just, used to that yeah exactly. <laughs> and then we have kids you hear it every day yeah. I mean, and you're saying it every day too. So. <laughs> <It's> like, <no laughs> matter. 
no yeah. get down no um so one person did comment about some particular software in here um that nsa wrote i mean i i i love my background if you guys love me i love open source software i love what it's done the things you can do with it python's one of my I would say one of my favorite languages just because of the the diversity of its use um but is the tool useful it really depends on finding a you know a career or a job path where it could be useful sometimes tools are new and folks don't really know about them i mean uh uh, MongoDB for a long time wasn't understood. This like no SQL kind of philosophy of database. That was novel and misunderstood. Uh, and now it's one of the main ways you go. It's it's funny seeing technology uh, move so fast. Like for me now looking at software, it's a lot more abstract now, a lot more complicated, but it does a whole lot more faster. Um, so yeah, I would say there's always gonna be new tools. You find something that strikes your fancy, jump in there and play with it, see if it works. And then search in LinkedIn and see if people are hiring for it. Yeah. Uh, is there any sort of professional development groups that you recommend focused on InfoSec? Uh, uh, social well, absolutely. groups, I would say, meetups. So, and these groups are definitely very, very raw and original hackers. So look for DEF CON and then an area code where you live. You're more than likely going to find a group of folks that get together about once a month maybe on the third day of some day of the week. I mean, it's the third day of the month, like maybe like third, like third Saturday of a month and sit around and talk about hacking, talk about gadgets they built, physical gadgets they built, demonstrate them, play games, and just really the whole domain of security. So yeah, DEF CON, DEF CON like 404 is the Atlanta one. I was up in Jersey this week and I ran into DEF CON 201 and those guys are still hammering out. What's cool is those guys, they had a switch there where this guy built a distribution of Linux that actually boots on top of the switch where you can actually run other games and use it as a tablet. Um, and he said the reason he did it, uh, he was had to do his taxes and everything else was, uh, the, the battery life was dead. So he just picked up his switch and figured out how to boot an OS on it. So it could actually, I don't know, it's cra crazy, but you're going to find all kinds of cool folks. So I would say that's good for getting into the real deep core. Um, OWASP chapters are always good especially for networking and finding other folks. And then I would say languages, any kind of languages and coding that you're interested in, search for something like that. I know there's Java groups, there's, um, I doubt there will be C++ groups, Python groups, definitely get together. If you get into data analytics, there's a lot of folks really big into Jupyter notebooks these days. Just look for the tech. Like you, you find a job, you want to get in like data analytics, go look at the requirements, look for some of those common terms and see if there's a, a local meetup. Um, because yep. folks like to learn, gather together and, and, and figure stuff out. And the cool thing is that's where you're going to probably find a job. It's yeah. really about who you know, who it's you a, meet. I think there's like a, um, it's an, I think it's meetup.com or something. Oh, absolutely there is. That, uh, I mean, it's huge. If you look up meetup, you can kind of see there's software ones. And I would say wherever you live, if there's not a meetup you want, go make it. Yeah. Um, top non IT skills to bring to the table when trying to get into oh. IT cyber. It's oh, a great okay. question. IT I cyber. love that question. Well, I would say the human element. I think, um, I mean, social skills are a big deal uh, in every domain. Um, hmm, top, top nine. No, exactly. just top non, non, IT uh, non, skills. non, non, IT um, skills. you know what I hate to, I'll, I'm, I'm going to say it. And I, I think it's probably true is writing skills. I, I as much as I deplore writing, um, I, I've learned to like it because I've learned to write the way that I write in my voice. Um, yeah, writing skills is definitely something that's helpful, especially as you progress up in um, leadership roles. When you're in leadership roles and management roles, you're going to be expected to do a lot more writing. Uh, entry level jobs, not so much. Now, if you're in a field where you need to document, like say a threat, like you documented some malware, you're doing analysis on. Um, you're going to need to communicate that to somebody else. Yeah. Um, teamwork. Communication is huge, man. Well, always. I, I think at any level, um, especially if you're looking to grow, being able to communicate and articulate any, yeah. at any level, anything that's going on, you know, if, if any type of issue happened or um, even if you're just troubleshooting something and you want to document your steps or and maybe uh, explain to somebody how that happened and put that in an email – those types of skills are actually really important. Absolutely. And, and they become more valuable as you progress in your career. Uh, I would say also teamwork skills. Um, 
and also, I don't know, maybe it's just my personal opinion because of the, uh, you can get around a lot of arrogant, smart, IT, software types. Humility is fantastic. Humility and letting go when maybe it's okay that person's wrong for a bit, let them be wrong and yeah. learn on their own. I don't, I don't know. It's, uh, it's kind of funny to think. Uh, my insecurities, I'm telling you, Zach, so insecure. And it's fascinating as I started to get over that. And I would say I probably didn't get past that until my, my later 20s with some experience and failures. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, perseverance yeah. is another one that I would say. Yeah, we could, there's so many books I could recommend on that's the, all those subjects right there. Um, yeah, I think that's, that covers a good many of them. Yeah, it was fun going to uh, like the, uh, the conventions and stuff for me because like I go into them and I'm like, man, everybody in this place is smarter than I am. Like, you know, you just walk around and like you're just, you're just, you know, in, in this crazy place filled with like geniuses everywhere. So, so I would say, so right yeah. there, if you hold on to that for the rest of your life, I think you'll become the smartest person in the room without knowing it because there's that's something else too I've learned in my short period of time on this planet. Everyone has something to teach you. And with this domain, this technology, there's no way that you and I can be knowledgeable of everything. And leaning upon your peers, uh, it's crucial, especially in IT and coding and all of this. Yeah. There's an interesting comment here from, um, let me see here. Uh, there's one I want to get to because I've seen this guy answer, ask it a couple times. Okay, jump uh, in there. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to this one. This one's okay. fast. Uh, he said, uh, well, he, he's thanking us. He, Peter says, hey, Zach and Josh, thanks for taking the time out for sharing this info with us. Question, what cybersecurity IT websites uh, do you follow to keep up to date? So, okay, the, the original one that I loved and then I missed is Slashdot. Just, that's old classic. Um, mm, yeah. I mean, that was just classic. Uh, nowadays, to be honest, this sounds very selfish. I, I, I keep up with people. And I let the humans that I interact with that are security experts filter a lot of the internet for me. Uh, I'm on a lot of mailing lists. That's something too, is the DEF CON uh, list in Atlanta at least, they're pumping out information constantly. Um, I also make sure there's a lot of friends that I have that I sit down with and just talk philosophy around security. And, and, and I don't know, yeah. So there's just, there's so much. Um, so yeah, I don't, Reddit is a good place of course. Reddit, that, that's, that's like my, one of my go-to resources, Reddit and, and LinkedIn, actually. LinkedIn. Well, you know, LinkedIn, that's actually a good point. Now, on LinkedIn, I am a, I'm a good bit there, too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, and that, that, that's kind of self-selecting, too. So it's the information you're looking for is going to find you. Um, yeah. yeah that, that's a good question. So the answer I have is it slashed out it used to be. Now it's just all over the place. Yeah. Um, I'm, I set up Google Alerts, too, for different did, keywords. Yeah. So uh, depending on you know, what I'm most interested in. So like, yeah. you know, hacking could be one of them, you know? Right. So anytime there's something that, that hacking is involved, now, I you would get alert for that. Gizmodo, um, yeah. Gizmodo was one that I religiously followed for a while, just because from the hacker perspective, um, the, the inference I can get around what people are doing with technology, that was fascinating to me. Because the one thing I would say about security is, as Zach said numerous times, thinking outside of the box, finding those perspectives that are outside the box are definitely uh, very valuable for uh, keeping you aware of what's possible. Because that's yep. what amazes me. There's just, there's more than you and I can even imagine. All right, there's this one question here kind of around computer fraud and abuse. One thing I want to make everyone clear that's an American on here. It is illegal to access another computer without ownership or prior authorization. So in the US, that would be considered a felony. So those of you that have concerns about how do I, I play around and train and practice uh, virtual machines on thumb drives on your own networks, that's really the safest way to go. Um, doing it at work, be careful there. Really being at home on your own networks is a very important thing. So I, yeah. I do kind of hear that, that concern. That is always a frustration to have with security is you could get the tools, but you could be identified as doing something illegal pretty quickly. But if you keep it within your own world, don't go hit a website that hasn't granted you permission to do so. Um, yep. So yeah, that's something I wanted to cover because the last thing you wanted to do is be studying for uh, CEH and the cops knock on your door. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, 
Joseph Flores said, do you think that capture the flag tournaments are good training for security? I'm going to say 100% yes. Yeah. I, I would say they're a good motivator for you to learn security. The event itself is probably not as valuable as what it forces you to do in a short period of time and the people you're meeting there. So you hang around like-minded folks that are doing the work you want to do. You eventually start doing the work they want to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, is there anything else popping up that you want to jump on? Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Joseph Flores for the super chat. And thank you, James Shackelford for the super chat again. Thoughts on <laughs> IT professionals getting MBAs. Oh, I love it. Okay. So that's great. Okay. So let me, let me, uh, let me get situated on that one. Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to use the word synergy because I got an MBA. Let me tell you about that. All right. So um, I was working full time doing software stuff with the government um, at, at Georgia Tech. And then I had to get a master's. Part of the requirement in that job was you had to get a master's. And I so selfishly wanted a computer science master because I felt like I wanted to become the computer scientist, the ultimate coder. Um, then my boss, my mentor told me, probably be good for you to get an MBA. And I was so offended. So then I found out Georgia Tech, had, Georgia Tech had this degree called an MSM, a Master's of Science Management. Oh, that sounded, you know, kind of, no. So they actually, I signed up for it, got accepted. Um, and then it turned into an MBA because marketing wise, the people are having a hard time getting jobs. So the MBA was what it became. So I spent five and a half years getting an MBA. I, I could tell you, James, um, there was a lot of people there that I met that were getting MBAs early in their career. And I would absolutely encourage people not to do that. I was going through management roles prior to starting schooling um, from a software side, which managing software developers, is there anyone here that has, that is hard. Uh, it's emotional, software's art. Some days it needs to be engineered, but it's still art. So complicated. The MBA gave me a couple things that computer science definitely did not. One, value. Understanding what's really important. It's not really important that your software is optimized and that it looks really cool. That doesn't solve problems or pay bills. Uh, it's really understanding what is the true value you're trying to solve. So MBA really helped me do that. Uh, a lot of finance, a lot of other kind of stuff that I found absolutely boring. Gave me a perspective I didn't have. Um, and then realizing this, this is my favorite. Um, there's a lot of stupid people out there that make a lot of money. A lot of stupid <laughs> oh, people. Oh, yeah. That's so, so true. It's not about money. Um, so, yeah, is luck part of it? Sure. Lastly, the thing that bothered me the most, though, because I was hoping for a wonderful philosophical answer, was the network, meeting people. The people you meet, the people you hang out with are going to be people you work with. Uh, and that's the way business works. I mean, Zach and I are you know, working together because we met in a business setting at a conference. Um, so that is the way it is. So yeah, your network, but yeah, I would recommend, I mean, folks that if you feel like you're definitely going to move into leadership roles and manager roles and, or you want to go start a business MBA, I, I would definitely recommend it. Um, but I did do a part-time, I did a part-time and it took a long time and I learned how to love coffee, black coffee at midnight. So good. Gross. <laughs> I can't do black coffee. Just but anyway, I, I couldn't agree with you more on on the uh, <laughs> what you said there. MBA is definitely for people who are looking to go for management. And well, and, and it's funny. I mean, folks, I, I it's funny. I um, management was always evil. I is the dark side, and then also sales. Let's talk about sales in a second. Sales, all those people are liars. Yeah, you're um, a freaking liar. When I went to get my MBA, I realized number one, there's a difference between a leader and a manager. Leadership is about vision, motivation, direction. Management is about the process of how you get there. They are two different things. They are not the same. And in most cases, a majority of humans do not possess both skills. Uh, so I learned that. Um, but the sales piece, the business development is what I called it at Georgia Tech because it made me feel less uh, salesy. <laughs> but the selling, every day, every single one of us are selling ourselves. We're trying to sell our ideas, our perspective, the image we have. And when I realized that what sales really is, is trying to help someone that has a problem, solve that problem. If you're a good salesperson, you're not selling a hammer to a guy that needs a spoon. Uh, that's disrespectful. You try to find the folks that need that hammer to hit the nail and you, you find them. Um, yeah, totally different world, man. It's, it's fun though, but yeah, MBA. 
if you get the MBA, definitely let me know. I, I can de- give you some tips on what not to do and how not to study. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. I think we, I don't know. I mean, I think we nailed a, a bunch of questions. We, we rocked out the cybersecurity stuff. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe maybe we're going to have it do this occasionally. I, I, I would, what I love to see is folks going out there, trying, celebrating, coming on here and saying, Hey guys, I got a job. Here's what I did and sharing their story. Cause I think that's, that's too part of the reason I shared my story is maybe there's someone out there that could empathize. Well, this, just like uh, you, Zach. This, this butte ween in the chat said they just landed an entry level help desk level one support. No certs, no experience. <laughs> Awesome. And uh, I said congrats to them. And they replied back and said, thanks IT, cor- cor- <laughs> thanks, IT career questions. Thanks to some of your interview tips. Dude, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. that's, dude, that's helping. I mean, what's cool, man? You're like, you're like the IT guy of people. The IT oh. guy of people. Mm. I mean, that could totally go different directions, which we won't take that here. But yeah, man, but like this, yeah, that's good. Hey, good job. Congratulations. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I would definitely love to, uh, to get more people on and chat about that. James Shackelford, one class away from getting your MBA. Congratulations. I'm yeah, sure yeah. you are so excited to get your sleep schedule back. Yeah, Congratulations. Right. Wait, are you, uh, wow. I'm just sitting here thinking one class away. So that's one more semester. Okay. Woo. Hang in there. It's worth it. It feels weird though. So this is, the, this is so neat, Zach. I mean, there's there's a lot of people out there learning and sharing, and this is part of it too. Um, well, man, I could talk for days, as you know. You and I both have spoken for days. Um, I definitely keep this conversation going. Love to to look for uh, more comments and questions. Definitely, um, we'll look on this uh, video right as when um, as it's posted with some comments. Jump back in there and kind of share some answers. Love hearing from you guys. Yeah, I think we, uh, I mean, I, I definitely want to have you on more. So we'll, we'll cool. think of a new topic for the next episode and think of, a, we, we have to think of another crazy thumbnail. <laughs> oh, we going to, dude, all day long, <laughs> baby, all day long. Uh, yeah, something else, be creative, be yeah. crazy. Yeah, cool. Well, thanks for having me, brother. Absolutely, anytime, sir. And thank you, everybody in the chat. Thank you, James, for all of the super chats. I greatly appreciate yeah. that. And uh, all of you have a great, amazing, fantastic night. Always cool. keep learning. Don't ever stop. Because that's right. If you stop, well, then you stop, and that's no fun. <laughs> the wisdom. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> no, but seriously, take it easy. No, it's true. Yeah. Thanks, hey, Josh. quit, quit, quit when you're dead. That's right. Quit when you're dead. That's right. All right. Peace, guys. See ya.